all yours, George. Yeah, let's see if we get this thing sorted out. Uh, get back up to the to the beginning. Yeah, I'm just going to go with there. Uh, I'm not sure that that uh, what's happened here. I'm not sure that most of the people on the on the in the, the society know what's going on with the school. Uh, it was originally built, this building was originally built in 1790. Uh, it was originally built as, as a Quaker school. It uh, was bought, it went over to private residency sometime in the early 1800s. Uh, and it went through a variety of, of uh, <clears throat> expansions. I think uh, what Ellen called uh, architectural evolution and adaptive use uh, it was used as a a hospital in the world in uh, World War Eight, War of eighteen twelve. Uh, it passed on to private residency after that, and major alterations were done. Uh, you can see from the screen you have now uh, there are two front doors to this building. Okay, originally built uh, as a stone structure facing south with a porch all the way across the width. Uh, it was built by the Quakers as a school. Uh, when it passed into private use, it was expanded to the north, and you can see from the screen. Uh, here that uh, it has two completely different personalities. The, the, the stone structure facing south is the original structure. Uh, the, the photograph on the left uh, is the opposite side, which faces Park Street. Uh, this was the addition that was put on sometime, we guess, in the middle 1800s. Uh, to do that, they excavated back into a hill because this building was built into a, into a steep slope, uh, added 16 feet to the rear, and they actually added a new roof line. The original structure was, had a gable roof. Uh, they added the stone on each side uh, and put a salt box roof on it. Uh, and and the, the, the construction of this thing has really been a headache because when it was built, uh, they added a gable roof in 1910, which I can show you in just a second. Uh, and they built that right on top of the existing salt box roof. So the, the, the uh, 18, called 1850s, salt box roof, even with its metal membrane on top of it, still exists and it's sandwiched between the ceiling of the second floor and the, the floor of the attic. So we could walk down and take a look, say this is what we've done. Uh, this is the, what we would call second floor of the building. This is the, the floor that will open up to Park Avenue facing the courthouse. Uh, it, is, it, it, it has an at grade entrance. Uh, you'll see that in the photograph as we go along. Uh, and what we've done, uh, and, and Pat uh, Greenwald and Ann Schoenhardt have been, this has been their dream for many, many years and have been instrumental. And I think Pat will be on here next to share uh, the programs that we want. But there are four display areas that we have here, starting with a mills room, uh, which will be about the, the uh, flour mills and, and other mills that existed in early Ellicott City. Uh, the school room, which will represent a school that will have the, the school desk as they would have been in the early 1800s, general stores the same way, and the great room, which, are, which again, Pat can explain to you, will be basically the, the where people would live or what we would call today a living room or a family room, okay? This are, these are photographs of those rooms as they are today, renovated, okay? Uh, on the upper left is, is the mill room. Be, because the construction of, of this building was so unusual, we decided to make a window into the wall. What you see here, is basically a bit of the framing of the original structure that was done in, in the late 1800s. Uh, so we wanted to leave that out. It, it's kind of give us an industrial look uh, and it will be in the, in the mills room, which will be about basically the mill industry that existed in Elkin City at the time. Uh, the other three rooms below, these are as they are today, uh, not quite done. Uh, we, because of the age of the building and, and basically the neglect of the building over probably the previous century, uh, the floors up here were in pretty rough shape. Uh, we overlaid them with yellow pine at random width and refinished them. All the old uh, plaster walls were pulled out and redone uh, to mimic the look of plaster. Uh, the, the center photograph, which is the school room, has got some of the color put into it. Uh, the next week uh, the, or a week from today, uh, the painters will come back to re will return and put the finished work and each room will have a different color. Uh, and, and, and truthfully, it is going to be spectacular, I think, when it is done. Uh, we'll move on. Each one of these rooms has been sponsored. And this, I think, is very important in the long run. Each one of these rooms has been sponsored. Each sponsor has donated 
a substantial sum of money and, and to have their name put on it and to continue to help with this museum. Uh, the school room is sponsored by Tom and Ann Clark Schoenhut uh, and Ray and Patricia Greenwald. The great room is, is sponsored by the Honus family. The garden is by the John Slack family and the Slack funeral home. And the general store is Tom and Sally Goss. And the Mills room is Ron and Ellen Flynn Giles. Each one of those has put up $5,000, which the board has selected to put into a maintenance and operation, not, not even a maintenance fund, an upkeep fund for the building. So when we finally get done and turn this thing over, uh, hopefully that the continued exterior maintenance uh, and perhaps upgrades will not be a burden uh, on the operational finances of the society. Uh, there, we've done some work to the outside. We still have, there's a, an addition that was put on the east wall that belonged to the county. It, when the county bought it in 1951, uh, they, they used it as a planning and zoning office and then the state's attorney's office. And they put a brick addition on the east wall, which is now currently called the vault, which it was a vault for state's attorney's trial evidence. Uh, that has been converted and we can see that in, as we go a little further along. Uh, this project was started, uh, management was started by Tom Bauer, who was the president at the time when I joined. And unfortunately he passed away very suddenly, uh, which left me in charge of the project as it turns out. But we've decided, but we got far enough along when Tom was still alive. And this is the part of our, our first phase of construction. This is the Southern elevation facing over a steep hill down and overlooking basically Main Street in Ellicott City. The stonework here in the porch that you see is part of the original construction of the building. Uh, the fancy, uh, as Ellen calls the lace work, it's actually cast iron, not wrought iron, was added sometime in the late 1800s. Uh, on the right side, um, top is a brass plaque, which we have made is now attached to the lattice work on that side of the porch. But the society has decided to dedicate this porch in the memory of, of Tom Bauer. And I, I hopefully that he, he will be very pleased to what he would see there today. Uh, as we go along, this is the, uh, so skip this. this is the second phase of construction on the lower level, which Tom was involved in. Uh, upper left is actually the, the archival uh, shelving that was purchased and put into the vault. Uh, it's obviously populated now with part of the collection. And the other photographs are of the rooms that were done downstairs. Uh, and right now, we're in, 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 a, in a, as uh, Fred said, we're in a state of flux. We've got uh, furniture stored here that goes up. It goes up into the museum proper. Uh, we have furniture stored here that's part of the collection. And we and hopefully when we get that sorted out, we'll bring back some of the, the, the uh, items, mostly furniture that's stored over in the courthouse. This is a view from the front. Uh, this was one of the last phases that we did uh, prior to the interior. Uh, and this is what you will see when you approach. Uh, this, again, a strange house. Um, underneath the porch is the restroom from downstairs, uh, as well as some closets. Uh, so if the, if the floor of the porch leaks, it leaks inside the basement or inside the, the lower level. Uh, that's all been re redone. The, the, the flooring was uh, fractured and, and rotted. That was pulled up and replaced with water shield underneath of it. The ceiling was the same way. That was replaced. Uh, the, 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 these are the shutters. I don't know whether they would be the original shutters to the house, but they were hanging there when we started this renovation. The lower right picture is uh, a little, uh, as it would currently be today, it's been photoshopped a little bit by a professional photographer who, who did, did some work for us. The rear of the building, or what we're calling the rear, because it has two fronts, this is the south-facing facade. Uh, the upper left-hand picture is a sleeping porch uh, that was added when the current roof was put on, we think in 1910. Uh, this is, uh, and the center picture is part of the exposed salt box roof. Uh, for those who aren't aware, salt box roof is asymmetrical roof. Uh, the, the, the high point of, of, the, of the roof, unlike a gable roof where it's in the center, is skewed to one side. So you have a short, somewhat vertical wall or, or, or gable roof line, and then a long sloping one to the rear. A long sloping roof is, is stuck inside the building. Uh, this steep roof here is and was um, covered by the sleeping porch for the last hundred and some years. Uh, we, we have gone to HPC and gotten approval to have that uh, sleeping porch exterior removed. 
Uh, and because you, in the center picture shows the existing windows, there's three windows in there that will have been there hidden away for the last hundred some years will now be exposed and visible from the, from the street. Uh, the cedar shakes have been, have been removed uh, because there's nothing underneath them to keep them watertight. They'll be replaced with an in-kind, uh, same pattern, same size shingles and, and painted. Oops. Uh, this is the area between the Children's Museum on the left and the, the, the main museum on the right. The left-hand picture, it was as it was. Uh, it had a, uh, obviously a concrete sidewalk that was badly broken up with frost heave in bad shape. We've had that removed. Uh, and as it is today, it's simply mulched. Uh, the upper right-hand picture is uh, the steps that come down from Park Street. So they, they actually come off the front sidewalk that leads to the museum. They, we were going to retain them. And the lower plan view is for a patio that we plan to put in. Uh, so the, the, the steps coming down, the curved steps will come down to, to a path of bluestone, will take us down to a, as large a, a bluestone patio as we can put in there. Um, and then a wrought iron railing protecting the, 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 the slope and the steps going down to Court Street. Uh, we've been very fortunate. Uh, we have uh, been put in touch with a, a company called Planted Earth out of Westminster um, via uh, Margaret Clark from Clark's Hardware. Uh, she sent uh, Justin down to us and we've done some work with them. They are going to pick up the labor to do this. Uh, the total total value or quote that they had was some twenty one thousand uh, dollars. They're going to pick up seventeen thousand dollars worth of labor to build this. Uh, assuming we get approval, uh, Thursday Thursday uh, we have a hearing before the Historic Preservation Commission uh, and hopefully get approval for that patio. Uh, I think that's going to be a tremendous asset to tie both sides of this campus together um, for events. Uh, if we if we light it. Uh, probably with temporary lighting because of HPC. Um, I think it's, it's going to be a, a, a big asset to uh, what we have there. And my last slide, this is a picture of the completed workroom. Uh, this building is actually four floors. Um, it originally had a crawl space under the original, original stone structure. Somewhere along the line that was excavated out to head height and a door was added. Uh, so we have a basement. We have the, what I would call the lower level, which is storage, which I showed you a minute ago. Uh, then the museum level, and then this level is uh, the attic. It was pretty much finished, um, a little rough shape. So we had to do some repair work to the beadboard and it's painted. It will be a, both a workspace and additional storage space uh, for whatever goes, goes on in, in the museum. The left picture is, is, is what we found. And I guess it's a uh, an archive item. Uh, this dates the, the addition of the gable roof. Uh, as we said, the uh, salt box roof was stuck in between and actually hidden. We didn't really realize it was there until we did some demolition. Uh, but this is a tobacco pouch with a tax, state, uh, tax stamp dated 1910. And we found that sitting on top of the metal roof, okay, and underneath the attic floor. So the assumption would be that a worker tossed it there when they were doing the construction of the, the, the gable roof, which you see today. Uh, we also found uh, in there a stamp on the, the floor joist of that at construction. It says John S. Wilson, Lumberyard, Catesville, Maryland, which was back in uh, 1910. And I assume that's where the lumber was purchased from. So I think it's very exciting. I think it also be, I mean, needs to be noted that this has all been done with grant money. Uh, 100% has come from either the county uh, with tremendous support from Calvin Ball. Uh, we have uh, the last, last grant uh, to kick us over the top this year was from Courtney Watson, a, a state delegate and, and, and the staff that supported that, uh, gave us enough to, to, to finish this project. The, uh, the, I don't want to call it decoration, the displays that will be put in there are going to be funded by uh, the, the bequest from uh, Ed Walters and Lee Owens Warfield, uh, which it was very generous of them to leave us some funds. Part of that will be used <clears throat> used to to basically put the, the displays together, and I think that's what Pat's going to talk about both both the displays and <clears throat> the programs that she and Anna put together.
So hopefully this has been helpful. I think it's been a tremendous uh, uh, project and a tremendous asset to, to the uh, community. Thank you.